Hello all. Primary information sources brings a authoritative value of individual's thought process and that exactly is basically holding the entire research world. So, what we are going to teach today, what kind of primary resources are available, understanding primary resources, how helpful is primary resources, different types of primary resources, some comparative analysis I will tell you what are there between different kinds of primary resources, example of some primary resources and E based primary information resources available as on date. Now, again if you see that information resources are you know categorized into certain parameters based on contents primary resources are part of documentary services. So, that is how primary resources is so important whenever we want to know anything from any information you know services. Now, what is primary resources if we see that primary resources are those sources which contain original material that has been published, reported or recorded for the first time. So, that means whenever any article is published by any intellectual or any professionals in any journals or maybe a report is written or maybe a photograph is clicked. So, all these are primary sources, primary sources of information. So, we will come in detail how and how, what way primary sources helps us in other aspects of life. Primary sources include original writings, new or raw data whenever we are doing any kind of survey, so data generated thereby or system generated data whenever any data analytics are in place in case of any system driven study. So, those kind of you know data raw data which are we are getting any new interpretation of previously known facts or ideas. Now, whenever you are rewriting that idea in some different way that becomes a second source of information. However, if it is originally based on certain previously known facts something is written with entirely new and innovative concept, new, new interpretation of ideas. So, that is basically you know primary in nature. Any new observation or experiment in scientific or in a any social science field or any other kind of you know literature study. So, those observations or new experiments are primary in nature. So, they are primary source of information. Information sources that are not summary means if you are summarizing something or translating something, evaluating something, reviewing something, they are secondary part. Resources available in printed and electronic form definitely in all cases primary resources are available in these format. How primary resources help us? It expresses your ideas to public. Whenever I want to publish anything in any article or you want to publish anything in any journals or you want to you know writing a report based on certain parameters or certain you know surveys. So, you are expressing your ideas in a you know literature in a in a in a thought your thought process is basically you know involved in that particular write up. So, they are primary in nature your idea is you know getting reflected from your tacit knowledge part to the explicit form. So, that is primary or original work forming own arguments. Now, based on certain knowledge you gained in certain field any field. So, you have gained certain kind of you know knowledge on library science. Now, when you are you know giving your lecture or your speech you are arguing something or uh, or maybe you know framing a policy or basically you are providing some arguments before a question is asked to a teacher. 
So, that is basically a original thought content. So, that is how primary sources help us. Evaluate unfiltered information. Whenever there is information, so if you are evaluating into a original content form, so that is primary. Cross checking of data and critically, you know, original research work if you are trying to uh, critically, you know, evaluate that particular original research work. So, these are also primary in nature. So, there are several types of primary sources. Broadly, I have, you know, categorized primary sources into three basic part. One is print part, one is the, you know, electronic part and some others part as well. Now, primary periodicals, primary journal articles, conference papers, they come under primary sources. Newspaper or newspaper articles, technical research report, thesis, dissertations, synopsis, patent standards, diaries, letters, everything comes under, you know, primary sources. And mostly these in the initial days available in print form, now they are available in electronic as well. Now, research data, survey research data, market survey, opinion polls, whenever we are getting opinion polls at the end of a, or rather any electoral process. So, these are basically primary data. So, these are when, you know, uh, they, you know, form a research report. So, they are primary research data based report or survey based report. So, they are primary in nature. Proceedings of meeting. Today we are conducting a meeting in a office or in a research institution. So, the minutes of meeting is basically primary resources. Conference, symposia, whatever deliberations are there in these conference or symposia, they are primary in nature. Original documents, if you see, that is date of birth certificate, marriage certificate, personal wills, they are primary in nature. Records of any organizations, government offices, so they are also primary in nature. In the others category, if you see, there are several artifacts like coins, plant specimens, fossils, furnitures, tools, clothing. You know, all of these artifacts or paintings maybe, they basically provide lots of information about that particular, you know, product as well as that particular, they belong to certain, you know, period of time, historical period. So, they also provide that kind of, you know, information. Like, you know, if you want to study uh, about the, you know, development of Indian um, economy or Indian history, so you can probably, you know, see different, you know, uh, rupees note of different denominations. So, some pictures are there. So, it, it will help you to understand how, you know, Indian economy has gone from one part to another, one uh, time to another. Works of arts, architecture, literature and music, sculptures, you know, any music, different kind of building uh, architectures, you know, novels, poems. So, all these are also part of primary resources. All of us knows Rabindranath Tagore's different kind of poems and, you know, recitations or the musical voice of Lata Mangeshkar. So, these are basically originality, original, you know, primary work and primary source of information. Whenever any accident happens, if somebody saw that accident happened, so that is eyewitness. So, eyewitness accounts, any reports, financial, you know, reports, court records, archaeological or biological evidences, manuscripts, minutes of meetings, all are primary in nature. In the electronic front, if you see that internet, you know, that is original web contents we can see, for example, you know, election commission of India site. So, that provide lots of original, you know, um, information when any general election, assembly election is going on or a state level election is going on. So, every time it gets updated and we, you know, get lot of primary information. CBSC results, every student is hooked into when, you know, that result is out. So, CBSC result uh, is very important and CBSC website is very, you know, um, uh, well, 
you know, visited during those periods. Emails, list serve communications, lectures, seminars in different academic or rather official methods or correspondences, interviews, video recordings, audio recordings in the form of you know, radio programs, speeches. So they are also very important. Communication through social networking tools like you know, whenever you write anything in Facebook or LinkedIn or any blog writing you are doing, so basically they are primary in nature. You are you know, promoting your thought process or even WhatsApp messages you are sending. So that is also primary in nature because you are you know, either providing your thought content, ideas or maybe you are arguing on something. So basically they are primary in nature. So all social media uh, uh, contents whatever is generating day by day is of primary in nature. Now comparatively if we see the utility of some primary resources which are more academic in nature, so they are you know here we are studying something of scholarly journals, trade and industry reports or journals, newspapers and popular magazines. If you see the value and uses of those things, now scholarly journals are basically reports, original research, they carry articles, detailed analytical in nature normally. Sometimes they also carry book reviews and usually all scholarly journals either in open access or in closed access maybe publishers content, so they are refereed in nature. Refereed here means they are being you know evaluated by some experts in the field. In the case of trade and industry journals if you see that they are basically you know specific subject oriented product news they brings up or they provide current trends, they provide company developments, company news, some biography or statistics, similar type of contents you can find or maybe association details, some changes in portfolios. So those type of material you will find in trade and industry journals. Newspaper we all read every day, even in electronic form newspapers are available and well read also. You know, they, they provide normally current information, crack new, news stories, local and regional news and in different language also you can find. Newspaper do carry ads, tender information, editorial interviews and several other, you know, movies information, sports information and several other things. In the popular magazine section you will find, you know, the current events, analysis of popular cultures some short stories, interviews, book reviews, so these you find in terms of you know the contents or values of or the uses uh, what we you know perceive from these particular sources. Now when you come in the language part, language in the scholarly journal will be more academic and technical in nature, wherever in case of you know trade and industry journal these are practitioners normally you know read it. So they also use different kind of practitioners jargons. So normally not for uh, meant for you know ordinary use or for general public. However, newspaper and popular magazines are non-technically written language for everybody. Authors if you see in the case of scholarly journals they are academicians or scholars, intellectual professionals. In case of trade and industry journals you find practitioners like if it is a medical journal, so normally a doctor will be writing. If it is like fertilizer news is available or maybe you know if you see chemical weekly, so you know a chemist or a pharmaceutical professional, so they will be writing those you know articles. Similarly newspaper journalist will write or report anything. And popular magazines also some freelance writers as well as journalists they write. Sources if you see that footnotes, bibliographies, citation of each and every contents is important there. In the journals you will find bibliographies or cited text. Newspaper do not cite anything so as you know popular magazines. Publishers are normally universities in case or some you know scholarly presses or maybe you know publishers of private or academic publishers, they publish scholarly journals. Trade journals are normally published by professional societies, newspapers are by different commercial publishers, so as you know popular journals. 
graphically if you see that you know all scholarly journals provide graphs, charts, formulas, etc. Whereas trade journals you find lots of photographs, charts, tables, industry graphs, so that kind of thing. Newspaper is a conglomeration of everything. Like you know pictures you will find, you know uh, chart, tables, ads, everything you will find. Popular magazine has a very specific you know way of presenting graphs and pictures. Now when you come to primary periodicals is a publication which is published with definite periodicity under the same title for a very long period of time. Also they are available in e format where you call them e journals. Now what they carry? They carry scholarly articles normally written by subject experts and for scholarly audience they are. Each issue is dated and numbered like volume, issue, year etc. is mentioned. Authors affiliations given usually they do not carry any advertisements. Each article is cited that is very important and published by normal publisher or any societies or academic institutions. So current science is an example of that. You can see that you know it carries so many types of documents which all are primary in nature. Journal article if you see that you will find that each of this journal article have it you know title of the journal then you know their issue volume etc you will find article title you will find authors their affiliations abstracts keywords volume issue publication years everything you will find in a journal article so as the doi doi is document object identifier so that is a specific number to that particular article or a journal so that you will find publishers information you will find and then if you go on this is only the front page I am showing. So if you go on you will find the full text article at the end of that you will find references as well. Newspaper on the other hand so this is a more of a awareness in nature. So they carry you know any happenings any news in the area of politics or social news or maybe economic front or maybe sports anything and that is at the national, regional, local level everywhere you will find. Similarly, newspaper brings out feature articles also, editorials, you know some weather reports, sports reports, stock market information, TV programs and so many type of primary information which you are basically you know get to know from any newspapers. Varieties of reports are available. So government publishes so many reports like India State of Forest Report 2013 I am showing here, annual reports published by different ministries or different organizations, market research report produced, tour reports, then you know several technical reports, working group reports, different types of or varieties of reports are available in India as well as in world, everywhere you will find. So this is example of a you know uh, report which is on energy efficiency scorecard. So this basically provide you all type of energy efficiency. Now here you can find the format of a report. So beside the you know cover page report you will find list of tables, list of references, list of you know graphs all these things. Normally a report format has a title page then table of contents list of abbreviations etc. Then executive summary you will find body of the report contains the actual matter or the actual analytical you know study they want to mention then some recommendations conclusion etc. Everything you will find there. Research synopsis and thesis both are primary in nature. It conveys the program, the name of supervisor, who is you know uh, the candidate, university details research titles and you know followed by what exactly he wants to you know do in their research. Similarly thesis format provides except literature review which is basically a secondary you know collection of you know different type of abstracts and different you know evidences. Everything else is primary in nature. Here a researcher provide the detail account of what research he has carried out in that particular field and data analysis uh, they do and different research findings what was found. So that has been recorded 
and followed by some recommendations and any other developments required for this purpose. So, that is informed. In the next stage, you find patent and standards. Patents is basically a government grant which gives a person or a company sole right to use or sell a new invention, process, design, anything for a certain number of years. In India, it is normally 60 years after death of the author. However, there are different, you know, years uh, variations are there in different, you know, uh, countries. Normally, individuals or research institutions or where research activities are carried out, so they basically need some protection and that is why, you know, patents are invented and patents are provided to them. Similarly, government grants lot of patents and publishers details of granted patents through official publications. So, people can, you know, get access to that patent, they can use with the uh, support from that particular organization who has, who is holding that particular patent. There are several organizations which publishes patent or grant patents. So, here I have put some name like, you know, United States Patent Office, European Patent Office, World Patent Office, Indian Patent Office. Similarly, every country has their own patent office. In the case of standard, standard is something different. It's basically, a, you can say, it's giving a certain range. It's an authority having been, you know, produced by national or international organization like ISO or BIS. They provide certain range for something. This is just give you an example, like whenever you receive any pollution certificate for your cars, you will find there is some standards given. Against that, whatever is coming out from your car in terms of carbon emissions, so that is being, you know, recorded. So, this is a standard government of India has given. So, like, you know, Euro 6 is coming up, that kind of thing. Another example in the standard case is like the, you know, document you get when uh, you do a blood sampling, blood test report. So, you will find a range given and what extent your, you know, documents are or your blood sample is basically what result it is giving out. So, that is your against a standard it is basically being measured. So, this is how, you know, standards are very important primary source of information which helps us to understand some best practices available and against that what is existing. Research data is another type of primary data. Uh, both available in the form of, you know, graphs or table form. So, research data could be, you can get it from different surveys and or primary or exploratory research and you can generate that data and you can use for your different products uh, preparation or maybe some commercial uh, study or maybe some research based analytical, you know, study or thesis, anything. Diary is another kind of primary information. Diary basically provides you a personalized information, biographical information, socio-economic information, historical perspective. One example I am giving diary of Anne Frank, which vividly, you know, given you details of how Nazi regime was. So, a little girl have written her everyday story in the form of a diary, which is very popular in today's world even. You know, there are other kind of primary sources as well. Poster provides you some information. Letters give you, like, you know, letters from written by Mahatma Gandhi, Jaharlal Nehru, or even Netaji Shubhash Chandra Bose. So, these are giving you some, you know, historical background or socio-economic background. Certificates like marriage certificates or any birth certificate, or certificates you receive after passing out any exam. So, that is basically a primary source of information. Similarly, advertisement, photographs, they capture original information and happenings and they provide you lots of primary information sources. Speech is very extempo speeches capture critical thought ideas, personal values of a person. Similarly, interviews from one to one or one to many, you know, provide you the solutions discussed, also encourage bringing out your own thought process or tacit knowledge out 
in the discussion table. Another example part is artifacts, artifacts, paintings or any you know statue what is prepared or what is available today, they provide useful information on historical, culture or socio-economic perspective. Paintings can illustrate past events, whatever happened in the past you can get to know in using uh, or seeing a painting. So, e-based primary source is something which is basically you know you can digitize some matter which is not available in digital form and then OCR that text and you know make it accessible to others. Ideally, a primary source on web should be made available in both forms when original are difficult to read or you know you cannot get access to that. So, based on some keywords or based on some meta tagging, you can search any documents which was available in the past and you can access them today. So, e version of primary sources are several, they are non verbal, you know, information provided. So, just giving you some examples like you know video recording to students or video message to students what we are seeing today, they are primary source of information because they capture primary ideas, thoughts or intellects of one or many professionals together and you know disseminate to many or one professional. Videos are quite popular and widely used as to share primary information or knowledge. You know, YouTube is the most popular portion where videos, uh, most popular platform where videos are kept. Over 1 million videos downloads are presently being made in a minute's time in YouTube. So, dear all, what we have learned today that you know, what are the different primary sources, how these sources are used and what kind of you know resources you can or information you can find from this you know using these primary sources. I believe you know there are many more primary sources are available, I could not cover everything in this uh, moment. However, there are several you know uh, varieties of sources are available and videos and uh, presentations are also you know primary sources and lot of e-based primary sources are also coming up and in future I believe you know many of us will be you know uh, getting different varieties of primary sources in digital form. Thank you.